Greetings, Timothy Austin Digital Apothecary, and today I'm going to be doing a video about how to go about blocking. So this is a question that I get asked by other pharmacists and students, um, so I'm going to frame it very much from a pharmacy background and getting into a space. Now, trying to get into this, I'll give a little bit of background about where I've come from. So I started blogging back in 2011 when I was a resident, and at that point in time, I was using a uh, Blogspot article kind of system from Google, and it wasn't really a dot com, it was just putting stuff out there. And I was just learning about what I was doing in residency, things I was learning, <clears throat> and just basically random stuff. And then I got really interested about how to use mobile technology, mobile apps, things like that, and I started writing like just little summaries about the stuff I was coming across. Uh, around the time I saw that there were some websites that were also doing that, like iMedical Apps was one. And what I did was I reached out to the editors, asked, hey, could you use a pharmacist to write for you? They said, sure. So I came on board as a writer, and my, at that time I was responsible for writing about um, four articles a month. And then I became an editor, I was writing about eight articles a month, and also reviewing other people's work. And I stuck with them for about three to four years almost. And it was kind of cool because we I was invited to go to conferences and different events to actually write about those events. I was trying to interview people, app developers, and stuff like that. I actually remember back then when the first group I talked to when they were in infancy was like um, MediSafe, for instance, and a lot of other stuff. And that's really where I got my big background in mobile health or digital health at that time. And then from there, I started trying to look for other venues to write for. And some of them included like Pharmacy Times. They were looking for contributors. I reached out to them around the same time. And they said, yeah, we'll take you on board and you can be a writer for us. And that was really cool. So I started like just reaching out and trying to network. And I was building up a portfolio. And from that, then I could go to others and start saying, could you use a writer? Now, when I was working for a lot of these other things in writing, um, I was getting paid for it. So each article was getting um, money uh, through different means like that. So it was a nice little sig side gig. And then about four years ago now, I decided I wanted to start my own website. So I basically created the digitalpothecary.com and then start writing my own articles and putting content out that way. So that's kind of been my whole process. And at this point now, every year I've been doubling the number of uh, people who uh, visit the website. So I'm around like just shy, I think of about 50,000 people for 2019. And it's been fun. It's definitely been something that you kind of have to take some things into consideration. So that's how I've been blogging and writing. I guess the question turns to how do you get started? For me, it's kind of like, my advice is think about an audience. Who do you want to read your work? For me, originally I thought about pharmacists, but then I've also found that a lot of pharmacists don't have a large amount of interest in digital health. And that's kind of a, been something I've been trying to get more awareness of, obviously, through, if you see what, a lot of what I write about and talk about, that's one of my big things, because I think it's something our field needs to get into. But I've also found that um, a large number of readership I had was startups, founders, pharma, executives, uh, investors. It, it was quite interesting. A lot of people in tech industry as well. So it wasn't so much that I was writing towards a lot of pharmacists, I realized, when I was starting with my readership and who was reaching out to me and like saying they like my work, it was a lot of people outside pharmacy. So I actually had to change my writing style and how I went about things. And that's something that's always been my mind. So knowing who you think your readers are and what you want to get across, and that also will help change your style. So definitely figure out like which core message and what you want to put out. What I think also happens is Inevitably, someone says, hey, I want to start a blog, I want to start writing about these ideas, like X, Y, Z. And what can happen is you get to the point where you write about X, Y, Z, and you have nothing else to write about, and you kind of hit writer's block. You're like, how do I turn out content? Like, how do I do this? Now it's becoming a chore because I have to think about things to write. And that can be very frustrating. So that's something that you definitely have to consider if you want to do articles um, all the time. So some of the things I've considered over the years is, for me, I came out trying to write every single day. That did not work then every week and that did not work. Nowadays I average about two to three posts a month and I'm very comfortable with that. I go for more long form articles or articles with more infographics on there. What I have found is that um, having good graphical presentation really captivates uh, audience better and then running about what I'm trying to get across in that image. That is something I think has been a big strategy for me, especially as I try sharing more of my work on LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, I'm very impressed that I've done better on LinkedIn and Twitter as of late 
just because I think it's that's where I think a lot of people are more engaged for the type of things I'm talking about. So I think also like how you want to get that stuff across. Now, if you want to start out and you want to start just trying to write, one of the things I advise is don't go buying a website off right away. Maybe you just want to try your content, see if people like it. Now, there are free places you can write, like Medium. You can go on, you can just create an account. You don't have to pay anything, and you can write whatever you want on there, post whatever, and it's yours under like a certain subset, you have a link that you can share. Um, or you can open like a blog spot or something like that that's a free like site that you can put um, content out. Now, the issue with that, though, is that unless your heading is really good, it's not really easily to be uh, discovered, and it's going to rely on you sharing that work very hard and word of mouth to travel around by what you're writing. <clears throat> so that's kind of the issue. So like, you have to take that into consideration. Now, if you decide to start blogging and you want to like go hardcore into it and you want to make like your own space on the internet for it, you're going to have to think about, well, how do you want to set that up? It's going to cost money. You have to buy a domain and then you have to design a website. So you go to like a GoDaddy or something, buy a domain, and then you can go to like WordPress and like get a template there and design it. The one thing that was hard for me is I worked on um, websites that use um, WordPress and others, and I always think like it's a very big garden. You can do whatever you want. You can design. You can put whatever it is there, but you might need some backend knowledge set uh, in order to like make things look the way you want, unless you find a good template or you buy a good template. Otherwise, you can go to websites like Squarespace and like Wix and things like that. So I use Squarespace. Um, and the value for those is that you can basically make a demo website and make a design. And if you like it, then you can purchase a domain through them and the templates that they have and utilize. Now, the catch is they have templates that you then have to use and you have to modify them. In my case, I've had to change my template twice because the first time I made it, I made it very much like this opening space that was very hard to search. It looked cool, but it did not really have a lot of amount of searching. And I think it's because I changed how I wanted my content to be delivered. So I do a swap. I did that about two years ago at this point. So these are things you have to consider in terms of what you're putting across. The well, issue with a lot of templates is they're meant for like stores or like web fronts for people like selling things. I don't sell anything, so it's kind of very blog heavy. So finding like a blog design template might be difficult for some aspects. So you have to kind of think about that. For yourself. The next thing is that what tools do you need? So I also subscribe to other services. I use like Grammarly for instance to help out with my grammar um, and checking that because I used to get poked at a lot in terms of just making some spelling mistakes. And even for me though, even like using some of these programs, like they're not really medical focused. Like an example I have that I keep coming across, I try to tell the system to learn it is I may say like, you know, this thing is present in patients, um, two words. And the thing was autocorrected to inpatient, one word, like in the hospital. It doesn't recognize that it's separate that I'm trying to do. So it's very interesting from like, just like even word spelling of different diseases, they may change it for that. My one of my favorites though, like you probably see in a word, is you write E-H-R, autocorrect this to H-E-R, or so hers, not E-H-R. It's like, I love that stuff that will come up. So you have to be cautious, especially with a lot of jargon that you might throw around. In the same vein then is graphic stuff. So where do you want to pull images from if you want to use them? So it's like free websites out there like Pixabay is one that I know. Um, there's a bunch of them just like, so basically we talk about like copyright images. Like you have to be careful like you're pulling things that are not like where they're available from and what you're using. So just be careful that what you just pull from the internet and just say, hey, I'm gonna put this as like a header for my blog, but it's actually owned by someone else. So um, watching out for things like that. So like one example I like is like Canva. I subscribe to them as well. Canva I can make a lot of cool graphics on and such. I actually use another professional website called Lucidchart, but that's a lot to make uh, flowcharts or other images that I use for formal publications and journals. Canva makes some really good catchy images that you can use for different things. If you look at a lot of the like it has a lot of different templates as well. A lot of the images I use as a thumbnail for my YouTube videos, for instance, are made on Canva. And you can get a free Canva account. It's very limited, but at least it's a starting point to make things for yourself. Uh, it has icons and different drawings and different images you can put together. So those are some considerations you can also do. And I think that's beneficial just to kind of like, you don't just put out text because I don't think text is all that 
fun for a lot of readers, you kind of want to also think about how can you visually put across to your reader like what point you're trying to go. And I don't mean just like start slamming images left and right. You kind of want to like do things that kind of drive home what you want to talk about. So that's one thing also keep in consideration. The other thing is engagement with readers. I'm still struggling with this too a little bit, and I think that's also based on my website. Squarespace is not very commenter friendly to put in. Uh, I get I get a lot more comments on social media about what I write than within the website, and I'm still trying to figure out how to do that better. Because I think at a certain point you want you want feedback, you want people to tell you what they think or such to help you improve on yourself. Now, the last thing is to ask, why do you want to blog? And this could be very difficult. I think if you get into blogging with the idea that you want to make money from it, ads are kind of down in terms of how much money you make. You have to get a lot of ads, a lot of clicks in order to try those if you're doing Google ads. You can always go for like sponsorship or something like that as well. And you put their stuff on there and you refer to them. Um, or sell content or sell things. Like you'll see a lot of other people, and I've seen that. They will sell like educational content, they'll sell like ebooks and such through their websites and they'll, um, or like different data feeds and such, and that's how they make money. Or like some will charge for a newsletter and such. So those are things that some people would do. But I feel like those people also have gained a certain amount of crowd to want to do that. You can also be altruistic and you just want to write for the sake of writing. Um, and I've seen some good success there. The issue with that though is um, the time effort and that the fact that you're dumping money or costs or time into it, not getting anything out of it. So that's kind of an issue. So blogging may be a gateway for you to build more awareness of yourself. As definitely if you want to try building a brand around yourself, that's good. If you want to develop a portfolio of your expertise and knowledge and how you rate, I think it's good from that perspective. I don't know if it's positive in different areas. Like I don't know if like having your own personal blog like helps you become a medical writer or gain more awareness of that. I, I've heard it off and on different perspectives on it, but I always think it's a good way to basically represent yourself. So those are considerations. Now coming down to pharmacists in particular, I often think like writing about patient stories and such can be difficult depending if you're trying to be anonymous or if you're trying to actually put yourself out there. I think you have to be cautious in terms of how you relate stories and such. So if you read things I write about, I'm not very much ever going in depth about a story. I'll say like, I've seen cases of X, Y, Z, I've seen that, and it's very vague or very general. And I choose it that way because I don't want to like just narrow down on one thing in case someone says, hey, that happened with this person or that. So those are things I always keep in my mind. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is for a pharmacist, like running it's very easy just to focus so much on our profession and a lot of language we use does not work well with others. So if you want laymen to read your writing, you have to be cautious trying to explain things. Even other physicians and nurses may not follow what you're talking about. Um, and that's some things to consider. The other thing is lastly is how do you get your content across? I, I would say just share it across social media like Facebook, um, Twitter, LinkedIn, things like that I think it's always safe for putting out. Uh, don't just like put your article out without any like description about what it's about. I think when you do that, people just see a link and they don't know really what that means. But if you can say like, hey, you know, like, just give us some kind of narrative around it. And sticking to a narrative, I think, is always very key and very important. So last thing I would say is uh, along with that, to sum this all up, is once you start writing, don't expect it just to suddenly blow up overnight. I mean, I've seen that happen for some people. But I think it does take time. I think it does take work and effort. It's very easy to get burned out trying to do that. And you may on your back end see like, oh, I've only had like five readers for this article or only 10 readers. Or then maybe get another one you're like, oh, I have a few thousand. And it's kind of like those are like the highs and lows of writing. So I think if you do writing and you do it for yourself, it's going to be very valuable. Uh, I think if you're doing it because you want an end goal in mind and you want it to be a rush thing that will attain it right away, I think it could be a slog. I think it could be tough. So that's been my experience around that at least. So feel free to leave comments or questions and I'll try to answer them below. But in any event, take care and have a good day. This is Timothy Elsa, Digital Apothecary.